Hello everyone, this is Search Trivia. As we wind down our 12 days of Christmas special here on the channel, we're going to go out with a bang here as today's top five list is the top five female characters that I want to see receive an artwork in the game Total War Three Kingdoms. Now in our previous list, we have already mentioned quite a few female characters, so those would not be repeated here as we're going to kick off our list with Lady Wu. So as the wife to Sun Jian and the mother to Sun Ce, Sun Quan, as well as Sun Ren, she's ready surrounded with unique characters in the game and she definitely deserves one herself as she played the matriarch role for the Sun clan after the early death of Sun Jian and Sun Ce. So she definitely had a lot on her shoulders to carry the family forward given that both Sun Ce and Sun Quan was quite young when Sun Jian died and even when Sun Ce died Sun Quan was still quite young. So Lady Wu definitely had a huge part to play and also she comes from a very powerful clan in the Wu commandery. You can tell even by her last name that her clan is actually very vital in the region and her influence as well as her clan's influence definitely helped Sun Ce get started in the south. And even if we fast forward to the early days of Lady Wu before she married Sun Jian, at that time Sun Jian was just the upstart from a pretty average family down south who became mayor. And Lady Wu was a orphan. Uh, her parents both died when she was young, but orphan here doesn't mean no one took care of her. She's still part of a giant clan. And Sun Jian, knowing that her family has influence, tried to propose to her. Now, of course, marriage between clans is beyond just love, and the Wu clan didn't like Sun Jian in the beginning. But since Sun Jian was known to be a bit reckless and a bit valiant, uh, Lady Wu didn't want to see her clan suffer any losses, so she went on to agree uh, to Sun Jian's demand. And they were actually a pretty good couple. They had multiple children together and lived fairly nicely and you can tell by the matriarch role that Lady Wu played after Sun Jian's death that there was nothing wrong with this marriage that began a bit rocky and I think if we give her a character in the game she would definitely fit the theme since Sun Jian dies quite often as an AI through his event triggers we often see Lady Wu as a regent for the clan and this way we can have a unique figure lead the clan during the interim phases before Sun Ce comes of age or sometime before Sun Quan comes of age if Sun Ce also dies to the AI event. So Lady Wu is definitely a top choice and she was even considered pretty high up for the top 5 Wu list, we just didn't have a spot for her. So here she would be a key figure. And then moving on we have another relative to another key figure and this will be Lu Ji or as many players of Dynasty Warrior might know her as Lu Ling Qi, uh, which is a name given to her in that series, as we can see her artwork on the left there. Now the artwork on the right is from Sun Guo Sha, or the card game. And this character is a bit of a mystery. There's not too much to talk about her in terms of historical aspect, because she is pretty much a fan fiction creation. I think in the fan fiction version, Lu Ling Qi or Lu Ji here is the daughter of Lu Bu and Diao Chan. And if anything, she's quite the fan favorite as someone who picked up the mantle of her father in Dynasty Warriors. Now, of course, in game, she's ready a semi-unique character with a pretty interesting background that provides replenishment for her own armies. So she's already quite powerful, and I'm sure the fans will love it if she receives the artwork. But in terms of historical backstories, there's really not much to share about her aside from saying that she is fictional here. And speaking of daughters of very strong vanguards, we have to talk about Zhang Xingcai, or Zhang Fei's daughter. And Zhang Xingcai here is historical and definitely deserves the artwork and inclusion in the game because she has a second role. She is the Empress of Shu, as Zhang Fei's daughter ended up marrying Liu Bei's son Liu Chan and became the second Empress of Shu after Liu Bei's passing. And Zhang Xingcai, given her status as a historical character, as well as Zhang Fei's daughter, is often the subject of different artworks in different games related to Three Kingdoms. You can see her on the left here in Dynasty Warriors, as well as her on the right here from San Guosha with her father's signature spear, the serpent spear, as her weapon. And I'm sure we would all eagerly await her inclusion into the game, as she's often seen as a typecast similar to her father being a strong figure often around the rather weak Liu Chan 
and she would definitely add some interesting flares to the second generations of generals of Shu. As once we move beyond the three brothers, Liu Bei, Zhang Fei, Guan Yu, both Zhang Fei and Guan Yu would have multiple kids that would feature prominent roles in the kingdom of Shu after their father's death. And Zhang Xingcai here would definitely be one of those shiny stars, as she is one of the few female characters that deserve some mention simply because of her Empress role. Now, given her Empress role, of course, historically she would never be found on the battlefield. But thankfully, due to Dynasty Warriors lore, I think when CA is going to end up creating her, she will definitely become one of those rare female vanguard characters added into the game, similar to the role that Sun Ren received. So we can definitely eagerly await her addition. Now, moving beyond the slightly more fictional characters, we have a few that are definitely more historical and deserves additions simply for their historical roles, and that includes Cai Yan, who is the daughter of Cai Yong, one of the few well-known scholars of this time. And Cai Yan's life is very colorful. So first off, since she is the daughter to a very well-known scholar, she received quite an excellent education in her youth and became known as a scholar herself, being very talented with poetry. And her poems are actually what kept her famous throughout the ages, as even as late as the Qing Dynasty, they were scholars that would study her poems and rank her as one of the top female scholars or poets during the entirety of the Han Dynasty. So that's where Cai Yan gets her fame. And Cai Yan herself was quite famous even in her own times when she was young, not only because she had a good dad, but also because of her skills in poetry and music. And she married quite early to the Wei clan. And the reason why the Wei clan could get a marriage with her is because if we trace the Wei clan all the way back, you had Wei Qing as one of their ancestors. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with who Wei Qing is, he was an early general during the Western Han Dynasty who led the Han attack against the Xiongnu tribes. And he was hailed as a national hero. So obviously their clan would have a long ancestry of positions inside the government and inside the army and would definitely be a good match for Cai Yong's clan as well. So Cai Yan ended up marrying someone from the Wei clan, except her husband died quite early. So she was whittled at a young age and returned back to her father's side, except unfortunately her father would die shortly after. So she went back to her ancestry home, which is slightly north of Chang'an, where they got raided by the Xiongnu clan, and she was taken as a female prisoner. And there is two versions of this story. The most commonly accepted version is that the king of the Xiongnu, Zuo Xianwang, took her in and married her, and they lived 12 years on the northern frontiers with a couple kids of their own. There's a other version which some historians doubt that she got an actual marriage, but rather she was a very well-treated female slave by the king, and they did have two kids, that part is actually true. But she was highly valued and treated well, just not sure if she actually had the wife status or not. And we say 12 years because when 12 year would end, by that time, the northern part of China was under Cao Cao's control, and since Cao Cao was a good friend to Cai Yong in his youth, and also apparently a mayor of Cai Yan during her youth, he paid a large amount of tributes to the king of the Xiongnu to buy her back. And she was returned to the Han, and it was hailed as a great move by Cao Cao. Now, you would think Cao Cao, given his propensities with widows would actually marry her, but Cai Yan and Cao Cao never got together as Cai Yan decided to marry someone else uh, in Dong Si, uh, which is another well-known scholar figure during that period, and they would live out their days. So that part is not too crazy, although there's a lot of fan fiction about Cai Yan and Cao Cao, both given their youth interactions, as well as Cao Cao's willingness to pay tribute to bring her back and Cao Cao's propensity for widows. So this is going to be Cai Yan, and given her status in the game, I think she's called the Nightingale. That's her unique title, which I think could use a little bit of a change. Definitely something more along the lines of scholars would be nice, uh, or some sort of talented poet. Uh, but seeing her with a unique model would actually do us some good. Now. 
as we end our series here, we're going to end with someone who is not as well known, but definitely historically deserving, and that would be Wang Yi. Now, this is a name that I'm sure most people in Three Kingdoms don't even know. Now, although she was kind of made famous during Dynasty Warrior 9 or 8 when she was first included, and if we have to draw her origins, her story is really hard to tell. So Wang Yi is just a regular girl who was born in the northwest frontiers around Tianshui. And she married her husband Zhao Ang. And Zhao Ang was given a government position and had to leave town. And Tianshui is on the frontiers in the northwest portion of the High Empire. And when Zhao Ang left, their village or town was attacked and she was with her two young sons and one young daughter. And when they were attacked, both her sons were killed, and she was violated by the invaders. And she wanted to suicide. But because she still had a six-year-old daughter, she decided to not suicide. And by wearing clothes that were drenched in uh, shit, that's for lack of a better term, and she basically repelled any potential violations by other male and she survived that way for many years until she was able to get rescued and united with her husband and she passed her daughter to him and wanted to suicide again as that was the reason why she would allow herself to live. But her husband and family kind of rescued her. I think she took poison but then they force fed her antidote and kept her alive and they reunited for a period and you would think that's a happy ending and indeed they had a few other sons together. I think their name was Zhao Yue and I don't remember the other son because Zhao Yue would actually have another tragic end and they started defending a place called Jicheng which is around Hanzhong region and this region would become engulfed in chaos once again when Ma Chao's rebellion happened. And at the very beginning, her husband wasn't like the key official in the area, but the key official that they were under decided to surrender to Ma Chao. So Ma Chao kind of became their boss. But she worked pretty hard in influencing Ma Chao's wife, as well as using her husband's influence to actually trick Ma Chao and get Ma Chao out of the city and then lock the door on him. So that's the part where Ma Chao was kind of abandoned in his defensive position and was forced to join Zhang Lu. So she played a key role in that. And of course, once Ma Chao joined Zhang Lu, he couldn't forget this family that betrayed him. So he led a force back to attack them. And they were put under siege for a very long time. And during the period before when she was trying to earn the trust of Ma Chao's wife and Ma Chao, she offered one of her sons as hostage. And Ma Chao ended up killing the son when he was betrayed. So that's also quite tragic. But she and her husband both fought on the front lines of the siege to defend the city. And within 30 days, Cao Cao's army would arrive to aid them. So technically, she would belong in the Wei regime. And the reason why is because they were Han. And then since Cao Cao took over the Han, they basically fell naturally with Cao Cao's regime. So there's not too much choice there. Cao Cao for many in the country was the legal regime because Cao Cao was prime minister. And she aided them in defending the city until Cao Cao's reinforcement would arrive, which would force Ma Chao's army to retreat. And then you had Ma Chao and Zhang Lu breaking apart, where Ma Chao ended up joining Liu Bei. Now that's much later. So Wang Yi is actually one of these historical figures that was a female that is extremely deserving of some sort of generalship if she's added into any game, because she actually fought and she was fierce, decisive, to be able to survive in her conditions when her hometown was raided to the point where when she and her husband formed a plan to betray Ma Chao, which is an intersection with another major character in the story arc. And if Wang Yi and her husband Zhao Ang would actually get added into the game as a minor faction in the Northwest, that would be fitting as well. So Wang Yi is definitely someone that not everyone know about but definitely deserving of a role in the game. As you can see, she's also included in Dynasty Warrior as well as Sangwa Sha. And I think she also has her artwork in Romance of Three Kingdoms, but we just didn't add it in here. So that's going to do it for our 12 Days of Christmas special. I hope everyone enjoyed these lists, and we can now eagerly await the new DLC, which I think hopefully will come out around Chinese New Year. That's just my guess. Uh, nothing certain about that. But hopefully as we approach Chinese New Year, which would be early February this year, we'll hear some more news. So, so until then, bye!